Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Top Figure Podcast. Today we have a really special guest to end the year off strong. We have David Melter. Now David Melter has done amazing things for the community. He has his own sports marketing agency. He has numerous businesses. And number one thing is he's trying to give back to one billion people. So David Melter, can you go ahead and tell the people who don't know you a little intro about yourself? Welcome on stage. We appreciate you having you today. Oh, what a great way to end the year, like you said, you know, saving the best shows for last. <laughs> yep. And certainly you guys are bringing it. Uh, for me, I want to empower over a billion people, so don't limit me, over <laughs> a billion people. And what I've done throughout the years, I ran the most notable sports agency in the world, Lee Steinberg. I was the CEO of uh, the world's first smartphone for Microsoft and Samsung called the PC phone. Uh, but I've leveraged that now with my sports marketing company with Warren Moon into my own personal brand where I have books, guides, exercises. I've been doing free trainings for over 20 years. I have a podcast called The Playbook, which has over 600 episodes with billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, entertainers. The biggest names and my trainings are included in there. And then I have TV shows like Elevator Pitch uh, with Entrepreneur. And I have a new show coming out on Bloomberg TV called Two Minute Drill, uh, and Amazon Prime Video. So I'm using my platform with one specific purpose to find a thousand people like you guys that I know in your lifetime will empower a thousand people to empower a thousand people to be happy. A thousand times a thousand's a million, a million times a thousand's a billion. We can get there together, guys, spreading the greatest virus of all time, happiness. Happiness strengthens us mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. It even strengthens our immune system. So it's gonna protect us against all viruses. And it's so easy to spread. You simply have to witness happiness and it'll spread. So I'm here to be on this platform to help empower people, to empower other people, simply to be happy, to make more money, help more people and have more fun. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's very amazing. And, you know, congrats to you and all the amazing things you've done. Right. So you have, you're having all this amazing success for like the last 20 years, you've been crushing it. But how about like when you first started entrepreneurship, like let's talk about the first year of actually being an entrepreneur, what it was like, because the top figure podcast, there's a lot of starters and what advice would you give them at the beginning stage? Yeah. So one of the things and mistakes that I made is I didn't ask for help. Uh, and the biggest piece of advice that I can give to entrepreneurs is you don't have to do it by yourself. Find someone, spend your time to find someone that sits in a place, in a position, in the situational knowledge that you want to be in and ask one simple question. Do you know anyone that can help me? People are not gatekeepers. They're not holding you back. We're all together in this. We are all, especially on entrepreneurs we're all sponsors and power sponsors mm -hmm. we're here to help each other and the biggest thing that i see is people especially entrepreneurs get in their own way because they're not asking for help and it's real simple in person on the phone via email traditional media social media ask do you know anyone that can help me make sure that every day that you're doing inventory of who it is that you need to ask help from because the fastest way to get to where you want to be is to find someone that's where you're supposed to be and ask them for directions absolutely and that's amazing and one thing is you know you have the elevator pitch that's a really dope show by the way congrats on that <laughs> and i want to really go into you know back to the uh, starting entrepreneurship right how important is it to have a successful short elevator pitch for your business or your brand well you need an elevator pitch for everything if you want your kids I know you guys are young, but you want your kids to eat broccoli, you better have a heck of an <laughs> elevator pitch. I got three teenage daughters. I gotta have a hell of an elevator pitch in order to convince them. You know, for example, I did a holiday picture with all of us with ugly sweaters. I had to use an extraordinary elevator pitch to get three teenage girls to wear those ugly sweaters in a holiday <laughs> picture. So the idea of an elevator pitch, why is it so important? Because it allows you to number one, stimulate interest with credibility, emotional attachment, allowing you to articulate the quantitative reasons, quantitative impact, quantitative capabilities that you have, and then transition those into a shared vision. So no matter what you want in life, especially in entrepreneurship, especially in business, sharing a vision with credibility and emotional attachment combined with the math, 
the quantitative valuation of reasons, impacts, and capabilities allows you to be efficient, effective, and statistically successful in what you do. Mm -hmm. Powerful. That's very powerful. Um, I want to I wanna really go into your first business, right? Your first business that you fit, like first started, you know, what was it like? Like, what did you have to do and things like that? Well, I, you know, got out of law school and went to work for a big company and made millions of dollars. Uh, and it wasn't until, you know, I got out of Samsung and the Microsoft phone, the PC phone, that I started building my own businesses. And two things that I learned, uh, which is an advice that my dad gave me. Well, actually three things. Number one, uh, being an entrepreneur, I'm very wary of partnerships. There's a rule that my dad told me about partnerships. Number one, don't go into partnerships. Two, if you do go into a partnership, make sure your partner has more money than you. And three, if you don't listen to rule one or two, go back to rule number one. Uh, so that was uh, one of them. The other one, which was way more important, not as funny, uh, but my dad used to tell me also, if you don't like someone, wish upon them employees and overhead. So when I really didn't like someone, I'd be like, oh man, I hope your company grows. You have thousand employees, huge offices, tons of desks and all kinds of uh, bills, man. So people were like, oh my God, Dave wants me to do well. No, the biggest lesson I learned as an entrepreneur is the hardest and most important part of being an entrepreneur is the people and controlling your cost. In other words, stay in business, make sure that you every day primarily put yourself and your business first so you can stay in business because the business and money and or capitalization of that business is the heartbeat. So it'd be like, I'm you know working out all the time, but I'm not taking care of my heart. And although I'm working my arms and my legs and my body and all these things, but my heart is deteriorating pretty soon. It doesn't matter how strong my body is if the heart stops ticking. So many entrepreneurs forget about that. So keep your eye on who you partner with. Make sure they're aligned with your values. Two, make sure that you have the right people and the right ideas around you. And three, control your costs. Make sure economically you're in business. Eventually, if you stay in business, you'll be successful. And that's very important, right? That staying in business aspect. I know you have a famous story of, you know, and one thing we talk about on our podcast consistently is failure. Failure is super important in your journey of entrepreneurship and getting to the next level. You have a famous story of, you know, a massive failure that you had and you've overcome. Can you talk a little bit about that and what was your mindset with that? So that way the people in the audience can know, you know, what are some ways they can overcome it and quantifying what it is to fail. What, what does that mean, right? Yeah, so for me, you know, I was born in a world of not enough. Uh, everything happened to me. I had a single mom, six kids, grew up, you know, she'd pack my dinner in a paper bag so she could work a second job, filling up turnstiles with, with greeting cards. So money became really important. I believe money bought happiness and love. And nine months out of law school, I was a millionaire. So everything from 24 years old on, money was affirmed to buy happiness and love. I was a multimillionaire into my 30s. Everything seemed to go my way. And then I got the greatest lesson of my life. I lost everything. Uh, you know, I didn't surround myself with the right people and I, right ideas. I moved from a world of not enough into the world of just enough. I was buying things to be happy. I was buying things I didn't need to be happy. I was buying different things to be happy. I was buying things to impress other people to be happy. I was even buying things to impress people I didn't like. <laughs> to be happy and what happened was you know like any pain or suffering to me it's an opportunity to find the light the love and the lessons and the biggest lesson that i learned is that i could not live as a victim anymore things don't happen to me i couldn't live in that world of just enough where everything was for me i used to give to receive i was fooled by that old statement the more you give the more you receive bs the more you receive the more you can give and with good intentions, I started to live in a manifested abundant universe in an instant of a second between limitlessness and infinity, a world of more than enough, more than enough of everything for everyone that doesn't happen to me like a victim or for me like an entitled, greedy, scarce person, but more importantly, through me, for others, it was no longer just what I was connected to and through, it was now I was giving my life away for everyone else. Facts. Powerful. Wow. And you mentioned something very important. You know, you weren't surrounding yourself with the right people. 
going into 2021, how important is it to have the right people around you or the right friends around you, the right business partners around you and things like that? Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. My kids are sick of me telling them that, right? Talk about stimulating interest. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. The most important thing is the energy that you surround yourself with. You can either elevate yourself or depreciate yourself. Remember the great chain of feeding. If it feeds you, feed it. If it doesn't feed you, allow it to fall away in varying degrees, determinative upon what it does do for you or how aligned it is with your value and future possibilities of feeding you. And most importantly, if it bleeds you, obviously let it fall away. And if necessary, fire it from your life. So I follow the great chain of feeding in order to effectuate surrounding myself, elevating myself to elevate others, but also elevating myself by surrounding myself with the elevated others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow, that's um, super important. And so going into 2021, like what's next for David Meltzer? Like, what are you trying to accomplish next? You know, this year you accomplished so many amazing things with despite everything that's been going on. What's next? You know, what's next on the goals? What are you going to crush next year? What are some of those things? Well, looking at all my platforms, I want to increase the community and the influence that I have in order to empower people with the most uh, important virus, happiness. Right? I want to create a collective consciousness of abundance and happiness where there's more than enough of everything for everyone, where more people are happy. Happy people don't attack other people. Happy people don't get sick. Happy people literally uh, you know, create abundance for all. So my goal is to use one, more books of mine. You know, I give all my books for free. Just go ahead, email me, david at dmelcher.com. I'll sign it. I'll pay for shipping. You know, it's not kind of a, a back-end sale like a lot of people out there. Oh, yeah, I'll get my book for free and then charge you 10 bucks to ship it. No, I'll pay for shipping. I'll sign it. I'll send it to you. All my exercises, guys, I want, you know, I have over 20,000 registered every week for my free training. Uh, it's the most downloaded podcast even more than the famous people that are on it, 600 episodes, all of them are featured on a playlist on Spotify. So I want to increase the reach of the podcast, the playbook. I want to increase the elevator pitch reach. My new show, I want to work really hard. I have another show called Office Hours that I do, uh, which I want to expand. I want to build the community of consciousness, of happiness with all the different things I do. Uh, my executive coaching, my personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, my private group, group coaching, and my free coaching, all of it's going to grow for one purpose, though, gentlemen, is to find a thousand people like you, to find a thousand people, to find a thousand people to change this world. Wow, and that's super important. And uh, in the background, it says money does not buy happiness, you know. Um, can you go a little bit into that and what that means? Because as, as an entrepreneur, too often we're chasing the money to get happiness, right? We're, we're in this mode of always chasing more money and get, trying to get more money because it's the right thing to do, right? It feels like, okay, in this world, like we're, we're chasing so much money that sometimes we don't take a step back and realize money actually does not buy you happiness. So what's your input on that? Yeah, so it's interesting because money's super important. It's one of the two currencies that I live with. Uh, my motto in life is to make a lot of money first to help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. The difference in my life now is that instead of attaching my emotions to the outcome of money, the currency of money, the object of energy that I put into the flow to get what I want, I use faith as my currency that I'm going to utilize money, which is so important in this realm, to shop for the right things. In other words, money doesn't buy happiness, but it allows you to shop. And if you shop for the right things, like community centers and scholarship and environmental safeties and precautions and you empowerment and books and all the things that you invest in. If you shop for the right things, money will buy you happiness. If you shop for the things you don't need, different things you don't need to impress people you don't like, you're going to end up miserable. Trust me. I lost over a hundred million dollars pursuing happiness through money instead of realizing happiness is the pursuit. Wow. Um, you mentioned you lost a hundred million dollars. That's not, that's not a quick uh, thing. That's not something easy. Um, what was that process like? And if you want to go into it a little bit and what happened there, cause that's a, that's a big loss and you know, you overcame it. A lot of people would be stuck in bed, like depressed the rest of their life, you know? Yeah. For me, it was uh, the best thing that happened to me. 
I actually bottomed out two years before I lost everything. Uh, my wife threatened to leave me and told me to take stock in who I was and what I wanted to become. So I, uh, you know, went and created these four values and five daily practices uh, that changed my life over the last 15 years. And even though two years later I lost everything, I had found faith and I'd found practices, I'd found discipline and strategy and awareness in order to effectuate every probability of my life into now a perspective or reality. Utilizing gratitude, number one, uh, to find the light, the love, and the lessons, and the superpower, and everything, and everyone. Forgiveness, which not only gave me peace, but also forgiveness gave me certainty because I am on the pursuit of forgiving the unforgivable. Once I'm able and capable of doing that, I have great certainty in my life Accountability gave me control. So no longer was I living trying to please other people. I was starting to vote for what I wanted because I was going to be accountable, asking myself two valuable questions. What did I do to attract this to myself? And two, what am I supposed to learn from it? And then finally, living an inspired life and effectively communicating, not just with everybody else to motivate and inspire them, but more importantly, connect to the greatest source of love the greatest source of light, the greatest source of lessons that I'm always connected to. So I use three laws in order to effectuate my free will to clear the connection to what I'm already connected to, the world of more than enough of abundance. One, the law of gravity. Law of gravity says everything's coming and being pulled down to me. Two, the law of Goya. Get off your ass. Nothing happens till you move. I may not be the smartest, most talented person you've ever met, but I will outperform and produce you. I will outproduce you because I believe in the law of Goya. Every day, 4 a.m., you, if you were a sniper, I'd be the easiest guy in the world to hit off because you know exactly where to find me at 4 a.m., meditating at 4.20, getting ready, and at 4.30, working out. I'm a, I'm a sniper's dream boy. There's no way if somebody wants to end my life, no problem. They know exactly where I am. So the law of Goya is super important, but the last one is the law of allowance or the law of attraction. Uh, both are symbiotic to me, meaning that in order to allow things to happen, you need to put out the right energy, the right thoughts, the right words, the right friendships in order to effectuate the law of attraction and allowance. Law of gravity, law of Goya, and the law of attraction allow everything to come to me at the right way at the perfect time. In other words, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, I'm giving everything I got, enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential, angling to what I want, but most importantly, utilizing the currency of faith that I will end up somewhere better than I can even imagine. Wow. And before we wrap this episode up, um, what are three traits every entrepreneur should have that they should develop these skills at the beginning stage that you would recommend for them, the last takeaway from this episode? Well, number one is consistency. Right. So consistency, have a habit machine, work on the muscle of consistency to be able to do something seven days a week. Right. I utilize in my book, which I'll send everyone, David at dmelter.com, power of 64. I can teach you to double the productive hours in a day, 16, be twice as efficient to make it 32 and be twice as statistically successful. Getting 64 hours of productivity, seven days a week. That's 56 days of productivity in one week. I wasn't more talented than anyone. I just beat you with math and productivity, accessibility, and gratitude. That's all it is. And so you need to be able to have that consistent behavior to get the exponential acceleration. Two, ask, 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 ask. You got to repeat it again. Ask. You learned how to ask before you were three. Find someone that sits in the situation that you want to be in. Make sure you're asking how you can be a service of value. But more importantly, do you know anyone that can help me in person, on the phone, email, traditional and social media? Ask, ask, ask. And then finally, the biggest and most important thing is learn to be a ferocious Buddha. A ferocious Buddha is one that practices ending fear. He identifies, number one, what he's afraid of, the primal fears, fight, flee, food. Sorry, fight, feed, uh, flight, feed, fight, or the other F word. And then the secondary fears. Need to be right, need to be offended, need to be separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, resentful, guilty, all of these. You need to identify those as a ferocious Buddha and then stop. Don't try to resist it 
go over it, under it, oversell it, back and sell it, lie it, cheat it, manipulate it. Simply get the key and drop down to center by breathing through your nose, out through your mouth, into a higher frequency called neutral. Drop down to center, counterintuitive in nature, but the most essential thing is to be in control and at peace through forgiveness and accountability. Be at center and then move in the right trajectory. So those are the three things that I think consistency, asking, and practicing ending fears of ferocious Buddha, it'll take you all the way. Remember, motivation will get you up, get you back up, get you started, get you restarted, but inspiration through these three disciplines will get you there. Wow. Guys, this episode had so many gems. Even though it was a short episode, we wanted to end the year off right. And there's so much information he just shared. I hope you guys are taking notes. I hope you guys are applying these things. David, I know you have a number they could text you. I know you have an Instagram, everything. Let them know where they can find all of your information. Thank you. I want everyone to join me. Come get my books, exercises, and guys for free. David at dmelser.com. I answer all my emails myself. I have a text community, 949-298-2905. Otherwise, at David Meltzer, David Meltzer on LinkedIn, YouTube, Google, David Meltzer, you will find me. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for the opportunity to empower others, to empower others, to be happy. And remember, most importantly, everybody, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. There you guys have it. This is another episode of the Top Figure Podcast. We had to end the year off strong. We had a very special guest. He is crushing it in many different fields. Don't forget to text him. Make sure you guys text him. Make sure you guys get his books. He just offered a free book to you guys that he's going to pay for shipping, so I need no excuse. Everyone needs to get that book. Make sure you go to his website. Make sure you go to his Instagram, Twitter, everything. Make sure you guys follow this guy. He's going to be crushing it this year. He's doing amazing things, and we are so um, glad to have him part of the Top figure community thank you for joining us today david melter appreciate you so much take care guys bye bye bye